system and network topology to the standard library. So what I want to do is to copy um, these things. I can add them in a Slack file, so you can just like, copy paste from there. But, but basically, are you going here is that you're adding the topologies in the topology folder in the standard library. The other thing you're doing um, is that you're adding you know, all the necessary things in the scan script, so you're able to compile this, and then um, also um, creating a um, configuration file to be able to run this at the end. And we run it so that at the end, it doesn't take forever to finish this. So let me put this in Slack again. Just put in the announcement section this thing. So just copy paste all of the lines and into your terminal. Oh, I'm going to do it here now too. Star, yes. Um, no, you can do it. Let me do it. Star, you don't need to do dash R. So it, the, you're not copying the directory, you're copying everything that is inside of that directory there. The first one is the topologies you want to add. The second, time, the second one um, is a scan script. I think I would do just Gen 5 would be fine. one is just a directory. Okay. Once you've done this, please compile this. Can I compile this thing? Is that okay? Can I compile two things?
So I'm assuming we're all done, right? One more minute. Okay. So we've been seeing this a lot, this figure. So like Jason was mentioning, we have this black box Ruby that describes um, uh, our interconnect, our cache and memory, and our co coherency protocol. And now what I want to talk to you about right now is the, control, uh, the controller, the interconnect. And uh, so the interconnect. And, uh, and uh, that this is not only the topology, but also the technologies that you can use uh, to implement this. And, uh, so for instance, if you, uh, I mean, I've done a lot of work on network on chip. So whenever you have to do, um, create a new, for instance, you want to test a new technology, for instance, silicon photonic or something, or if you want to add a new novel topology in your system, you know, a mesh hypercube or something else to see, okay, how the performance changes, then this is the place you have to come and change it. So we created these different controllers um, uh, previously, and now we want to focus on this on-chip interconnect. So just a little bit of background. So there are many sort of interconnects out there. So there are crossbars, buses, the foreground chips. And the thing is, um, the problem with crossbars and buses, even though they provide high bandwidth, relative lower latency, is that they're extremely, um, uh, they can scale very well. So in, in terms of power and aerial, it's not very efficient. Um, therefore, um, we, we can look at network on chips, which um, in this case, we have to specify some sort of uh, information. The one is the topology, the link and router um, macroarchitecture, um, the routing algorithm, the flow control, and so on. So these are the some things that we need to consider where we want to, when we want to create this uh, interconnect. So similar to caches, we have two types of interconnects here. One of them is si uh, simple network, which is fast, easy to use. However, it does not very, it's not very in detail. It also, when you run this, which you run this at the end of the session, you can see that it doesn't give you a lot of information in, in terms of the statistics. So that's why um, if you want to really focus on the interconnect, you have to do something uh, implemented with Garnet. So Garnet is more in detail. Um, and it also gives you a lot of information about um, uh, statistic information, such as queuing latency, um, networking latency, and so on. And there are also many things that you can basically configure um, using Garnet compared to simple, uh, simple uh, networks. So, um, uh, so first of all, how do we connect um, depend, like independent of um, whether you're using simple caches or a simple uh, network or Garnet, how do we connect um, uh, our controllers to this sort of system? Is that we do that by connecting our controllers, first of all, to our um, uh, routers through an external link, which is specified here. So first of all, uh, at, in this case, I'm creating one router per controller. So for instance, if you have L1 controller, L2 controller, directory controller, just create a one specific router for those controllers. And then the way you connect this is that you connect it through an external link, which is uh, shown here. So there is, um, so the, uh, basically you uh, define where is the source, like one, where is one port, the, uh, what is um, uh, the source and what is the destination. However, keep that in mind that external links actually bidirectional. So if you create one external link between one directory and one router, it basically can both two ways. It can go basically sending or receiving something uh, through that. So, and how we are connecting everything inside, instead of this, basically how we're connecting all of these routers together are through um, internal links. So internal links, um, uh, in contrast to external links, are not bidirectional, they are unidirectional. So you have to create, for instance, if you want to have basically um, both communication between these two routers, you have to create one from router, for instance, zero to one, and the other from, from one to zero. And this is basically how you uh, create this. Um, uh, you, um, uh, you basically go through your routers, and whenever um, your uh, router ID is different from um, um, the one that you're currently working on, or you are trying to configure, you create an, uh, like an internal link to connect it to the other one. And like it's a basically nested loop, so it does that both ways. So there's zero to one and one to zero. So any questions about this? 
So this is just how to basically connect your controllers to the routers and how to connect the routers together. All right. So the way we are connecting these routers together are what gives us the topology. So different uh, systems, oh, different systems you might use different topologies. For instance, in this case, we are using an all to all topology, connecting everything together with a very high uh, sort of bisection bandwidth. And this is like different ways, like this is basically a copy from the um, Gen5 website. This is for instance, different um, sort of configurations or topologies that you can create. Um, you're not limited to this. Um, you can be creative, create different topologies, but this is um, some of the uh, topologies that are, the source of them exist in your um, Gen5 config file. All right, so um, let's sort of uh, move into uh, the architecture of the links and routers and see why exactly our simple network and Garnet are different from each other. So um, simple network, um, you can basically, if you uh, go to the source code, you can see that there are things that you can specify there. One of them is the, in terms of router, is router latency and number of virtual networks that you've seen um, previously when you were creating different coherency protocols. Um, however, Garnet router has more basically um, parameters that you can specify. You can give it, um, it basically has more um, flow control information that you can assign to it. And flow control is basically how you are uh, assigning a message to different resources. Like how do you, do you distribu distribute all of these different messages to shared resources, for instance, your routers and your links. And um, so uh, for in Garnet router, you can uh, specify the virtual channels, which virtual channels uh, remove deadlock and also um, uh, uh, remove improve performance by um, uh, removing head of line blocking, and a number of virtual networks, which these virtual networks are basically a part of um, those um, uh, virtual channels, and also the fillet size. Um, and these fillet size are basically flow control units, the granularity that you're sending the messages through your system. So these are some things that you cannot uh, basically specify in a simple network, but you can change them in your Garnet because it's more in detail. The other one is link macro architecture. So whether it's external link or internal link, again, simple networks um, uh, will give you, um, uh, so I, uh, I think it gives you latency, but it also uh, can um, uh, specify the bandwidth factor. However, in Garnet, there are more detailed information that you can assign ba based on your network. Again, it helps with your flow control. Um, and two, uh, the two that um, have been recently added, that I, I, th I, mean, I haven't used them, uh, used them but um, it can be interesting in uh, network and chip uh, SLDs are um, supporting different clock domains, meaning that um, your network and all the components that are connected to that are working on, dif uh, on different clock domains. And the other one is having serialization, deserialization property um, uh, in your links. Uh, so this happens when your, um, for instance, um, uh, your uh, one of the components are different, working on a different um, fleet size compared to your, um, uh, your link. And also, you can specify the uh, size of your link as well. Um, yeah, uh, oh, went back. So the other thing is your routing algorithms. So the main routing algorithm that you can use for both simple and Garnet are the shortest path. You basically go to your, your network. Um, you, uh, you can assign weights to, this, to the links. You always go through the path that has the lowest number of um, uh, weights and has the lowest number of hops. And, and that's basically your um, simple uh, shortest path. And you can also, for Garnet, specify um, uh, sort of custom routing algorithms. And this can be an adaptive routing algorithm that basically takes to the account um, the, late, uh, the size of the queues in your routers as well, uh, as well as uh, the shortest path. So I know I went super fast here. Um, any questions or any confusions about these things? So, um, uh, so these are all, um, you can find all of the source code, like detailed source code of this on, uh, in Genfi uh, Gen under source um, mem ruby network garnet. All of these are basically specified there and you can basically read them uh, more in detail. All right, so let's look at an example. So the first one, um, I'm, I'm going to use MI example. I tried to use MSI, gave me an error with garnet. Um, so I'm going to use my example. So what we are going to do is that we want to create four cores. So we have two examples here. The first one, we have four cores. We connect these four cores to our L1 cache. 
um, uh, connect these L-band caches, and uh, we have also one memory controller uh, connected to a directory. So we want to create an all-to-all -all connection between all of these L-band caches and our directory. And we want to use the standard library to do this. And hopefully, um, by now, our um, uh, basic binary has been built. And the other thing we want to do is that at the end of this, we want to be able to see the statistics from both Garnet and Simple and sort of compare them to each other and see why I mean, uh, why we want to sometimes use Garnet over network even though uh, over uh, Simple, uh, then we want to get more information about our system. Okay. All right. Oh yes, it's built, yay, perfect. Okay, the first one, oh, let me go through the code first and then we can run this and see how it's going. Let's go to gen5, source, Python, gen5, components, cache hierarchies, and um, did we add that? Ruby, and my example cache network. So, so here um, uh, we added some topologies, right, at the beginning. So these topologies are Garnet Mesh, Garnet Point-to-Point, -point, and Simple Point-to-Point. -point. So right now we all only want to run it with Garnet Point-to-Point -point and Simple Point-to-Point -point and see um, the difference between these two. Let me just go through the code, um, it's fast. Um, so it's basically what you wanted to do is that um, for each of this, you want to import uh, specific network, and then if you go to your topologies, you can see the details of how these things are being created. So in a simple point-to-point, -point, you're importing simple networks to each simple external link and simple internal links, and um, this is how you're connecting your router. So you're basically creating one router per controller. In this case, you have four L1 and one directory, so you have five controllers. You're connecting these routers to the controllers through an external link, and you're connecting your routers at the here all to all together through internal links. And you can specify some, like uh, determine some like bandwidth factor I can assign to this so that some of your links have more bandwidth than the other links. So if you go to your um, the same path, or if you go to Garnet point-to-point, -point, you can see the difference between them is that you're using a Garnet network, Garnet external link, internal link, and those sort of information instead of uh, simple uh, router and those, uh, other, those components. The same thing, you're connecting your routers um, uh, to your controllers, you connect, uh, through external link, and connecting your controllers through internal links. One thing you can see here, is that you can um, sort of say that, okay, I want this link to have this latency and this weight. Again, there are more information that you can add here, but this is just something that I've done. And let's just run this and see how it works. <coughs> so again, um, let me. Okay, I'm not going to add that, but um, so we can go. So I start from your Gen 5 bootcamp environment and um, start building Gen 5 to use null or build. So I want to redirect the output, the statistics to a certain output so that we can see at the end how everything's changing. So what I'm doing here is that I'm creating a path to the output that I want the statistics to store in. Um, so I just do 
results. When it runs simple, so I'm just going to say simple. So, um, so in your in materials, I created a sort of a, a configuration file that you can use. which is called network config. And the parameters that it gets is basically um, the number of cores you want to assign here. You can, um, I'll say four. Um, I'm going to use simple point to point. So I'm just going to say simple point to point. And then the size of the memory that you want to use, which I'm going to just say 500 megabytes. Ah. Oh, out there doesn't have that. Ah. So now when you run this, your output will be at result, simple, same out. So I'm going to do the same thing for Garnet, and at the end, just take a look at um, the different uh, statistics and see what are the differences between these two. So basically, the last command you used, just uh, use Garnet point to point instead of simple point to point. Oh, no, here, no. And change the output directory. So if you run this, you can see, even though everything is the same, so you're using the same number of controllers and everything, Garnet takes a, takes a bit longer than simple um, to finish, of course, because it has more details. It has to, simula uh, has to sort of simulate more uh, things, features here. And um, so this is going to be very much um, apparent where your system starts to get bigger. Um, since I wrote the one before. So let's just take a look at the results or statistics. Let's start with Garnet. Okay, on the results. We are able to run this, right? One thing that you can see here is I think when you're doing research on network on chip, are very important are queuing latencies, network latencies, link latencies. Those sort of information are very important. So you can see here that we can queue. Uh, Why is it? Oh, no. Okay, so here it is. So this part of the, code, like, uh, the statistics are going to be very important for you. This ultimately, what it gives you is the pa average packet latency, which is basically the network latency and the packet queuing latency at the end. Some, some of them would be the same thing. So when you run um, uh, different configurations, different technologies, different topologies, you can basically compare this and see where is this um, uh, sort of difference between two performances that are coming from. Um, uh, is it because you're, um, you have lower number of hops? Is it because your routers will have lower queuing latency and so on? So the other thing again here is that it also gives you the average number of hops. Basically, how many times you go from, if your message has, has to go from one controller to other, how many routers it has to go through to be able to re reach to that path. So it's usually um, going to be, based on your topology, going to be fixed. If you're going adaptive top, uh, routing, then this can be different. Um, uh, because based on the traffic, it might go through different paths. So if you use the same one, which, uh, which was simple, 
um, use the simple statistics, you see that it doesn't really give you any information about split or average cumulatency or those sort of information. And the reason for that is because, let me just do network here. Because it doesn't really implement this. It doesn't really uh, implement the flow control very much in detail. And that's the reason it doesn't, you can have, find that here. So if you want to get more detailed information about something at the end, you, you might need to be able, you have to basically implement that through Garnet. I'll be fast. Yes. Uh, so I don't think I finished this at the, like I, I think I uh, said that after this second finish. So I, uh, yeah. But um, so uh, the other thing is that, um, uh, And that's the main reason that it is. It only runs for a few seconds. And, okay, one other thing I'm gonna go through is the, um, uh, the mesh, uh, mesh topology. And again, if you go to your um, sound library, um, Gen5, Python, sorry, you had a question? Oh, yes. So you see this part, right? It sort of gives you some understanding about your network latency, queuing latency, number, average number of hops, which is the one above, sort of information. Again, this is the, re the reason for this is because um, flow control um, have been implemented more in detail in Garnet than it was in Simple. So if I use the same thing, like do like an average number of, oh, actually I think average number of hops there. If I do um, copy this and try to find that in simple network, you cannot really find this here. Th that's because it doesn't have any understanding about how to basically calculate that. And you, it, uh, I think it does have an adaptive uh, routing algorithm implemented. Um, I've never used this, but um, mostly it, what it uses is the shortest path between one router to the other one. And it doesn't have weight, so it only goes by the link latency. And, So if you go to Gen5, um, Python, oh, source, Python. Again, Gen5 components, cache hierarchies, um, Ruby topologies. That was hard, okay. Or if you just look for garnish underscore mesh.py, um, you can find this. So mesh is a bit more complicated compared to the point to point, even though point to point will have, have a higher, um, uh, uh, basically, bisection bandwidth. So what we wanna do in a mesh is that we want to create, um, we specify the number of rows that we want to uh, have in our system. So in this case, I just use two number of rows. Um, I have uh, four number of cores here connected to four L1 caches. Therefore, I have four, four routers here. And I'm just going to con collect, uh, connect any other sort of remainder controller to um, one of these routers. For instance, in this case, to the router zero. Again, this can be something that you, um, uh, sort of topology that you wanna create and based on the number of directories, you can basically ask a number of directories to each of these ports. Right now, I only have one channel, one directory, so I'll connect it to this router over here. And um, so what, because I'm using Garnet to implement this, I also use weights, sort of to encourage my messages to go from, uh, through the rows, and then uh, go um, downward to the south, or to the north. So I wanna go have, like, encourage east-west communication compared to south-north uh, communication. And um, so the way we're uh, implementing this is that so I specify the number of rows. Um, again, the number of browsers depends on the number of CPUs. So uh, in my config file, I also pass the number of CPUs here. I, um, it's a Garnet uh, network, so I'm using um, different uh, link latencies and router latencies for um, uh, my system. And um, the thing we're doing here is that um, uh, we're uh, basically creating routers. So again, number of browsers are number of CPUs. The external link, however, going to be a bit different. 
So I'm going to create um, a sort of a controller part and a remainder part. The controller are the ones that are being distributed among these routers, and the remainder is the one that just basically is there. I'm just going to add it to one of the routers. Um, uh, yeah. So this is how it's done. Basically, um, I'm going to do this uh, network nodes. Basically, these network nodes are my L1 caches. Are, um, I create a path, uh, external link between this external uh, between this uh, L1 caches and the routers, and then the rest for the remainder, I just connect them to the router zero in this part. You can see here. Okay. And um, for um, the creating the internal link, the inside of the, like how these routers are connected together, I first create a east-west connection, west-east connection north-south and south-north correction, which is basically two, four, four nested loops are created here. So I don't think I have a lot of time, so I'll just run this. Quickly, um, just see how they can <laughs> so, um, so unfortunately, I stored it in simple. <laughs> okay, so um, if you run this to completion, if you run an application to run completion, at the end, um, based if you use the same network latency, the router latencies, what you'll see is that your point-to-point -point connection will have a better, uh, a better um, uh, sort of performance compared to your mesh com uh, configuration because mesh inherently has lower um, bisection bandwidth compared to um, uh, point to point. And um, yeah, so again, you can create any sort of topologies, incorporate any sort of um, network, uh, sort of uh, network uh, technologies here. Um, and um, if you want to do something um, that's like predominantly based on the network, then you better use Garnet compared to simple network. And um, so there is this other thing that's Okay, so you can also use Garnet for off-chip communication, which is not the best practice, and I don't suggest you do this, but um, you basically have to specify correct la router and link latencies to be able to do that. Okay. Any questions or anything? Yes? Um, so I don't have it right now, but you basically, so, okay, that's a very good question. If you look at the, if you look at the code, um, uh, the code for Garnet links, you basically have to enable um, the like, service enable or the um, CDC enable. You just have to enable that, and then you can have different fleet sizes communicated through uh, the system, or different clock domains communicated through the system. Yeah. Um, as, uh, for your, okay, so, I haven't done this, so I, I don't exactly know, but can we talk offline about this? Yeah, yeah, I have to do a little bit of reading about that. Okay. Any questions? All right. Okay, so um, like Marjan was showing, I kind of just want to show real fast some stats um, that we can get out of uh, Ruby that um, look interesting. So I'm going to run a simple pthread test, and we're going to look at some statistics. Um, so with Ruby, we can answer questions like, how many forwarded messages did the L1 cache receive? Or how many times did a cache have to upgrade from S to M? Or what was the average miss latency for the L1? Or even more precisely, what was the average miss latency when another cache had the data? So these kinds of things we can answer um, with uh, Ruby. So let me hope that this completed. Um, cool, so let me run build x86, MSI, jump.opt. 
No, I actually wanted the MSI because my MSI is broken. I didn't finish it. Um, configs, part three, simple Ruby. Let me make sure that I have Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Let me undo this change. OK. So I run this. It takes a little while. Um, so I'll note, one thing I'll note while I'm running this is, so this is using pthreads um, in SE mode. It is essentially impossible to statically compile pthreads. So if you do anything threaded in SE mode, it's going to use your host pthreads, which there's some significant trade-offs in doing that. So I would suggest against running multi-threaded code in SE mode, usually. Um, OK, so let me open up um, the stats.txt that was generated. I'm in gem 5 m 5 out, stats text. So let's see. Let's try to answer the question, um, how many forwarded messages did the L1 cache receive? So so if we look at this, um, so system.caches is the um, Ruby system object, and it has a bunch of uh, statistics itself. For this question that I'm trying to answer, which to run mine myself, was how many forwarded messages did the L1 cache receive? So I want to look at the L1 cache controller and then see how many forward get S requests, um, events happened. So there were two forward get S events, nine forward get M events. So there's a total of 11 times that the L1 cache got a forward. And so you can see for each one of these events, there's a count for the number of times that it happened. In fact, you can even see for every state, for every event, there's a count. So you can see very detailed exactly what happened within uh, the protocol as it was executing dynamically. Um, then we have a question, what's the average miss latency for the L1? So up here, there's a miss latency um, histogram. So this is a histogram here, which is kind of difficult to read. But the average latency is 75. The total number of samples was 30,000. Um, it has a standard deviation. And then this is split into uh, buckets of size 64. So 46% of the requests had between 1 and 64 as their miss latency. 51% had between 64 and 128. And if we keep going over, 1% was above 128. I assume this is cycles but it's unspecified. Um, so you can see what the average miss latency is. And then if we dive into, you can look at the more specific miss latencies. Um, for instance, I believe, yeah. So this actually tells us the um, miss latency when another L1 responded. So in this case, there are 18 times that another L1 responded with the data, and the average miss latency was 22, whatever the, site, the um, units are. I'm sorry, these don't have units. However, if the directory responded, then the average miss latency was 75. So you see that it was much faster to get data from another cache than it was to get data from the directory, because the directory had to go to memory as well. So I just kind of show you this 
um, to get you an idea of some of the super detailed statistics that you can get out of the cache coherence protocol. Any questions on this? Yeah, other than what the... So the stats are, yeah, that, that, that's actually a module we're not doing, adding stats. That's important. We should try to do that tomorrow. Um, sorry. Uh, so in the statistics of the histogram, every time you have a request, you add that sample to the histogram. So if it took 10 nanoseconds, you say sample 10 nanoseconds. If it took 100 set nanoseconds, you say sample 100 nanoseconds. And then at the end, it's split up into buckets, just like a histogram. And it says between 0 and 10, 1, between 100 and 110, 1, in my example, where 1 was 10 and 1 was 100. Does that make sense? Does, does that answer the question? Did you have to use the same model? Because I think the, stat, the stats I've seen is like scalar. Are you, are you yeah, so scalar is a type of stat. Um, histogram is another type of stat. We will talk about that tomorrow, because that's important, and that has not been covered so far. Um, you don't have to do anything to get these stats. These are just in Ruby, and they will be there for you. Um, okay. Any other questions on stats and Ruby stats? I can't believe we forgot to talk about how to add statistics, one of the most important things. Um, okay. So I just have a couple more slides, and then we can get to lunch. Um, okay. So I want to briefly say, as you're digging into Ruby, some things that you might want to know. Where are things? So if you want to look for where the uh, classic configurations, um, or the configurations that will soon be deprecated, um, in configs network is a bunch of network models, and configs topologies is a bunch of different topologies, and in configs Ruby is a bunch of the protocol configurations. Now, I say that I, I really want to deprecate these um, because they try to be such that no matter what your system configuration is, no matter how many CPU cores you have, no matter how many directories you have, no matter however many memory controllers you have, they want every single protocol to work with every single topology, to work with every single network type, which creates a cross product of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of different combinations. Most of those don't work. Some of them do. But most of them don't. And trying to write code that's so general ends up with just a huge amount of spaghetti code in all this. So it's, some things work in here, and it works really well when it does. Some things don't. I'm trying to move everything into the standard library where we actually test everything and know what works and what doesn't. And we don't necessarily try to be a cross product of every possible configuration you can imagine. Um, And the last thing I want to mention is the CHI protocol. So this is a relatively new protocol um, that was contributed by uh, some people at ARM. So this is actually the protocol that's on a lot of ARM chips. So they've implemented what our, the AMBA uh, CHI actually is. They've implemented in Gem 5. So what we looked at before when we were looking at Ruby is you specify a different state machine for your L1 cache, a different state machine for your L2 cache, a different state machine for your L3, a different state machine for your directory, because obviously all of those different um, controllers have different states, and they need different information to operate. So they're different state machines. Now, the cool thing about Chai is that it was designed such that you can have one configurable controller which could act as an L1 as an L2, as an inclusive cache, as an exclusive cache, as a mostly inclusive cache, as a directory, and everything in between. So this means the protocol written in Ruby and Slick is way more complicated than what we were looking at today, but it can be configured a lot of the way that the classic caches can be configured. You can add, you, you compile Gen5 once with the Chai protocol, and in your Python configuration file, you can set up basically any kind of hierarchy you want with this. You get the benefits of the classic in that it's very configurable with the benefits of Ruby and Slick in that it has detailed cache coherence information. Um, but the downside is, is it can, it's incredibly complex to configure. Um, we have a couple of examples, um, and I'm hoping that in the standard library more examples are coming soon. 
Um, to give you just a quick idea, um, if we look at the standard library example that we have, so all of these nodes are, or almost all of them are the same controller. So this is a protocol which has private L1 and a directory, and that's it. Um, so essentially, you set all of these options on the controller. For instance, do you allocate on a sequencer access? Do you allocate on a read share? Do you allocate on a read once? Do you allocate on a write back? You set all these things, and by setting them correctly, you can configure the node to be whatever you want in your hierarchy. Um, you know, similarly, the directory is also an abstract node, and the directory has false for everything because it's just a dumb directory and it doesn't store any data, um, and so it's false for everything. However, it is set to true that it is the home node, um, and so that's actually um, saying it's the point of coherency. Um, similarly, for like the D DMA um, engine, so this is like an L1 cache, except it doesn't actually cache anything. So you can configure all these different nodes and then set up your hierarchy um, in the same way as what Marjan was talking about with different kinds of topologies and stuff. So expect to see more and more things um, with the Chai protocol coming. I personally think this is the future of getting high fidelity cache um, uh, models in Gem5. There's another example of this in configs example, arm, nope. Somewhere there's another example. I don't know where. Maybe it's in Ruby? Yeah. Ruby Chai. Um, and so this is a uh, three-level Chai protocol, which is much more complex. OK, with that, um, I don't want to keep you away from lunch any longer. Um, but if any of your colleagues want to not have lunch, they can ask a question right now. Yeah, see how I phrased that? Because I want lunch. Okay. Um, 